So here we go through the manual example from the YouTube video. And what we have here is we have nine people, right? We have these nine scores. And these people are in three groups. You note how we put them underneath of each other, right? So you have group one, group two, and group three. And our goal is, and if we slide over here, our goal is to complete this ANOVA summary table. So the first step would be to fill in our degrees of freedom, right? We see between groups, between groups for the degrees of freedom of one is K minus one. So we have three groups, three minus one would be two. Then within groups, we have the total sample minus k, the number of groups, so we have nine people minus three groups is six, and the total is the total sample minus one, so it's nine minus one is eight. So, all right, good job. We've got the degrees of freedom completed. Now, the next step would be to come up with the sums of squares. And for that purpose, the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to calculate the group mean for each group. And in Excel, we use a formula. So we hit, we choose this, this cell here. We say, okay, this equals the average. Okay. And, and, and Excel helps us out here. The average of these three numbers and at the final parenthesis, which gives us 2.66. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> reduce the decimals here at 2.67. And now the next group has this, uh, the next person is the same group, so same formula, but you can see now Excel adjusts the range. So we can either just keep correcting it so I'm going to do this one that way. You can keep correcting it. Or what you also could do is this here. Um, right, this is group two. If you use the dollar sign in front of cells and the number, the, uh, the column and the row here, then you fix, you fix it. And if I drag it down, it copies it, but it should be fixed. You notice how that range stays the same. So that's a good trick for copying formulas. Right? You only have to adjust it. Uh, you only have to adjust it once. I'm gonna do this here. Note how we have the dollar signs: copy and then copy v paste. So we have this. So we have the group means, oh, here's something wrong, right? This should be the same number. And just to be consistent, I'm going to enter the same dollar fixed formula up here as well. That way we have the same formula. Okay. That would be the first step. Then the next step, we can calculate the grand mean. So what would the grand mean be? Again, I'm going to use, just copy paste this formula, but now it's not just one group, but it's the whole group. So that will be the grand mean. I'm going to drag this down here. So first we would like to calculate the <clears throat> total variation. So I'm going to scoot over here. the total variation back here. So that's where we calculate that. We'll drag it down. So this is the grand mean. And now we want to know for each individual score, what's the deviation to the grand mean? So I'm going to paste individual scores, delete this. I just want to know how much is this person below the grand mean or above the grand mean? So the formula here is X, the individual score, minus the grand mean. And 
and you can see this person is 1.78 minus, so 1.78 points below the mean. And I'm going to drag this formula down. And now we have the deviations. And now we do the same thing that we did for the for the uh, calculating the variance, right? We're taking this term and multiplying it by itself, squaring it. So multiply by itself, squared. And we drag this down. And now we have squared deviations. And what we're interested in is the sum of the squares total. So we want to know the sum of all these squared deviations. And that's 13.55. And here we are happy we can enter this in our formula. Right, I put already a formula in there. This cell equals R26. So R26 is the result from our sums of squares for calculation. Now we can do the same thing for the sums within, sums of squares within. But what do we do this time? Right, so we come over here. This is the sums of squares within. Same principle. We say, OK, this time we use all the individual scores, but we use the group means. Right? It just happens that in this example, these two group means are the same. Right? But notice again, this cell equals x, the individual score, minus the group mean, gives us a negative 1.67. Drag this all the way down, so we do that for each. So here you see, oh, this person is a 3, and the group mean is 3, so the deviant score is 0, right? The person is exactly at the group mean. Now we do the same thing again that we did before. We're going to square the difference so that we have only positive values and we can't exaggerate big differences we minimize small differences right so this one is below one you'll notice how the score will get even smaller right you see negative 0 0.67 becomes 0 0.44 becomes smaller the 2.33 becomes much bigger 5.44 okay same thing so we have the squared deviations here and now we do the same thing again, we add these up. So that's the sum of all these squared deviations. And guess what? This is our next piece for our ANOVA table, the sum of squares within. So we have this here. This equals F26. So we have the sum of squares within. And now what we need is the between groups, sum of squares. So now here, to do that, we're looking at the group mean minus the grand mean, right? We want to know how much does the group differ from the grand mean. So we're doing the same thing that we did before, but this time at the group level. So this is equal to group mean minus the grand mean. So we figure out how much is how far away is each, each group from the grand mean. And then we do the same thing. We square these values. We'll do it for all of them. And then we add them up. This again is the sum of the squares between. And we get a 0 0.22. And we enter this down here. And now you notice it automatically filled in the rest. So why is that, right? Remember, sum of squares within divided by degrees of freedom 2 gives us our mean squares. So I had a formula in there. Sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom, right? The blue divided by the green is our mean squares. Same thing for within groups. Sum of squares within divided by degrees of freedom within gives us the mean squares within. And the F ratio is nothing else but the between group variation divided by within group variation. So mean squares within, uh, between divided by mean squares within. Mean squares within, mean squares between divided by mean squares within. And then we use a formula from Excel, the F dist, where we X indicate the F value 
then we have to say degrees of freedom 1 and degrees of freedom 2. Right? So the same thing that we did with the t-dist formula, we do it now with the f-dist formula. And you note, now we have to indicate two different degrees of freedom, but we don't have to pick between one or two-tailed because the f-test is only one-tailed. It only has positive values. That's why it's only one-tailed. So this is how you would complete the ANOVA table. And if in this case, with the F value of 0.05, the probability of obtaining such an F value is 0.95. So it's very likely, right? One is the highest probability, zero is the lowest, and 0.95 is very likely to get such an F value if there is really, the, if the null hypothesis is true. So we retain the null. And if we wanted to go the F critical option, we could use this formula, F inv, and then indicate the probability. So 0 0.05 in this instance, and then indicate the two degrees of freedom that we have. We have freedom one, degree of freedom two, and thus the F critical would be 5.143. So, the F calculated would have to be bigger than 5.14 for us to reject the null hypothesis at the 5% significance level.